we are going to be going over our autobiography poem. So before we get started, I would like you to get a few things ready. I'd like you to go ahead and grab this yellow sheet because I do want to talk about this super quick. On the front of this, it has Miss Killingsworth and Miss Steely's in contact information. So if you need to get a hold of us, you have this all the time. We've been putting it on every packet. Um, please feel free to contact us anytime. We enjoy hearing from you. I've received pictures from students and videos from a few of my friends, and I really appreciate it. And I try to always uh, send it one back in return. Um, if you flip this over on the back side, you'll notice this is a checklist. If an item is crossed out, that means it is not required. Uh, we printed this. Um, and needed to make a few changes. So if we've crossed it out, you don't need to make a picture. But like this says, it is a checklist. So you can use this to keep track of what assignments you've completed and turned in. So in the previous video, I went ahead and did the repetition. I also did rhyming words. And you're working independently on characteristics of poetry review sheet. So on that sheet, you should be doing it and completing it all by yourself. In this video, we are going to complete the autobiography poem. So, before we get started, go ahead and get your packet out. Remember, your packet front cover is going to look like this. We're simply turning to the page that says autobiography poem. While you get that out, you should also get um, a pencil. And in my case, I am going to be using a marker so that you can read it easier. So what is an autobiography poem? Can anybody tell me what an autobiography is? Well, an autobiography is going to be something that tells about you. So you are going to be writing about you today. So I will read this for you. An autobiography poem is a poem all about you. All you have to do is follow a simple formula and you'll have your very own autobiography poem. So they've given us an example here at the bottom of the page. This girl's name is going to be Christine. So you're going to notice there's a certain uh, pattern to this poem, and we will discuss that after I read the poem with you. So Christine, positive, happy, playful, intelligent, child of Bill and Judy, lover of basketball, recess and candy who feels excited energized and silly who needs food clothes and shelter who gives smiles advice and friendship who hopes for peace joy and togetherness who would like to see Japan space and Disneyland resident of Irving, California, United States of America, Ryerson. What do you suppose Ryerson is? I see a capital letter. What does that tell us? It's a proper noun. My guess is the girl's name is Christine Ryerson. That's going to be her last name. So we're going to start writing our very own autobiography poem. So if you do not have your your pencil ready, go ahead and pause now and go ahead and get your pencil. All right, hopefully you've got everything you need to get started. So this is a pretty easy planning page. This is gonna help us do this very quickly and correctly hopefully. So on line one what does it say we need to write? You're right it says your first name. So now don't forget I know we haven't been in class for a little while but when we do write our first name it starts with a capital letter. You're gonna write your first name and on my poem I'll be writing about me so I'm gonna put my first name. Go ahead and do that now.
All right, do you have your name on there? Good, that was a pretty easy line. Now, line number two, four adjectives that describe you and try to be creative. So let's think back to when we were in school. We were talking about nouns, which would be a person, place, thing, or an idea. Now we want to do adjectives. Who remembers what an adjective is describing? If you said the noun, you are correct. Alrighty, so we need four words that describe who we are and what we like to do. So I was thinking about a few words for myself and you might want to ask mom and dad for some ideas, maybe even a brother or sister. It's okay to ask for help. So four adjectives that would describe Miss Steely are going to be honest, respectful, I'm also going to think about kind and helpful. I'll give you a second to come up with four words and don't worry about spelling right now. Remember this is our planning play page so this is like our sloppy copy when we're doing our brainstorming and our rough draft and you can always go back and change a word if you need to. And if you're getting help with spelling later, when you do your final copy, it's okay to make extra marks on this copy. This, again, this is your sloppy copy. Now, line three. Line three says child of, and it says use your parents' names. Now, most of us have a mom and dad. Some of us might have a stepmom or dad, and it's okay to use their names too. But if you would like to use your mom and dad, I'm going to use my parents. My mom's name is Judy, and my dad's name is Bruce. So I am the child of Judy and Bruce. Okay, this is where it gets a little bit harder and we got to start putting our thinking caps on. So we're going to come up with lots of words to describe who we are, what we like, what we feel, what we need, what we give, and what we hope for. So our next line, lover of. Okay, there are a lot of things I love and how many of you can guess what they are? First and foremost, it's going to be family. But then I'm going to get a little creative because for those of you in my class, what do I always carry in every morning? Every morning I have a cup of coffee. You got it. I love my coffee. All right. Another thing. At recess time, a few of you have caught me with these. They're one of my favorites and I even wrote a poem about it last week. Did you watch that video? What was my favorite candy? Peanut butter cups. Yep, you've guessed it. Do you see how easy this poem is going to be? We simply fill in the blank with a word. Now, they have to be words that follow our example. So our next line is going to be who feels. What do I feel? So I'm going to take a moment and I'm going to feel grateful. I'm grateful that you are all my students. All right. Another thing that I feel um, would probably have to be is happy. I'm happy to be here and share these videos with you. I'm happy that I've been able to be your teacher this year. And I'm happy to have Miss Killingsworth's class here with me too. All right. Now, I'm going to put another word, and it's okay to use words because we're going to talk about feelings sometimes, aren't we? 
So I'm feeling grateful, happy, but guess what? Sometimes I'm feeling a little sad because I do miss so many of you. So I am gonna use the word sad on my poem as well. Alrighty, we all need a few things in life. And guess what? There's a few of you that send me some sweet videos and who always pass me notes in class and I miss you. So I'm gonna put hugs. I need lots of hugs and I miss my friends who would greet me every morning with hugs. And guess what? As a teacher, I've made a lot of mistakes, so something I always need is help. Miss Killingsworth has always been there to help me, and I always appreciate that. All right, another thing we might need, I don't know about you, but staying home, some days I'm kind of secretly wishing for a vacation. Okay, here we go. Our next topic is, what do we give? What are things we give? Sometimes we give candy. Sometimes we give advice. Sometimes we give hugs. Well, I've thought about three words about things that I give. Okay, here are my three words. Support. I love making these videos to help you guys get through your work while you're at home. And that's my way of supporting you. The other thing I try to do is give good advice. I always try to help you succeed in every way possible. The last thing I'm going to put for things that I give, I hope I've done this for you, and that is hope. I hope I give you hope. <laughs> All right, who hopes for? What are them, some things you hope for? I could think of a lot of different things I hope for. Sometimes it's something silly like a winning lottery ticket. Sometimes it's hope that my plants start growing in my garden. But right now, I'm hoping for a cure for COVID-19. So I'm going to write the word cure. Okay. The other thing I always hope for are more friends. Every year we get new students in our classes, so I'm always hopeful for new students and new friendships. And, you know, sometimes I just kind of get stuck and don't have a thought. I think I might have to skip one. Is that okay? I don't know. Is it okay to leave something blank? I'm going to leave a blank there for just a minute and I'll come back to it because guess what? Sometimes we just need to take a minute to think about things longer and it's okay. So don't let me forget. We'll come back. All right. Who would like to see? Oh, there's lots of things I would like to see. Sometimes there's special movies. Sometimes they're sporting events. Some place, sometimes it's just places. Do you know where I would like to see? I don't know if you paid attention, but in the news a while back, Australia was on fire. That's one place I would love to see is go and visit some koalas in the wild. So I'm going to put Australia. Now what did you notice about my, my word? Did it start with a lowercase letter or capital letter? That's right, it's a capital letter. And why is that a capital letter? If you said it's because it's a proper noun, you're correct. And a proper noun is a specific name of a specific place. So we are going to capitalize that. What would be another place Miss Steely would like to go? Do you really want to know? I have an aunt that lives in a state that I've never been to before, and I would love to go visit my aunt. She lives in the state of Hawaii. Again, do you notice my capital letter? We have another proper noun. 
Remember, if you're listing a specific name of a specific place, it does need capitalized. Now, in our example, the little girl wrote Disneyland. Well, you know what? Miss Steely's been there before. So, I'm going to pick some other place that's close by that might be super exciting to go visit for me. And that's going to be Six Flags. Alrighty, here we go. Resident of. Do you guys know what resident means? It's not a word we use very often. Resident means you live there. So this is going to be about where we live. So if you notice down here at the very bottom, it says city, state, and country. Do you know what city you live in? Most of us are probably going to put Honey Grove right here. But guess what? Miss Steely lives really close to Honey Grove, but I don't live in Honey Grove. I live in Roxton, which is right next door. And do you know what our state is? I hope we all know by now that we live in the state of Texas. Yes. And our country? Remember our country? It is on the North American continent, and our country's name was United States of America. Again, you'll notice my capital letters for all my proper nouns. On the very last line, what does it say we need to put? Last name. So you are going to write your last name on this line. Whew! That was a lot of writing and a lot of thinking, but congratulations. You did very well. Okay, so what is our next step after our sloppy copy? Yeah. We're going to have to do a final copy. But guess what? You can pause your video right now. And you can go take a quick break, break. Maybe grab a favorite snack. Hopefully a healthy one. And then come back and we're going to do our final copy. So while you do that, I'm going to go ahead and put my rubric up here. You can go ahead and grab this out. Okay. And you're going to grade your own work. So Miss Steely is going to read this for you. And you're going to grade your poem based on what you wrote. So the first is the title. The poem has an appropriate title that matches the content of the poem. Did you put a title on the top of your page? When you did your final copy... When you do your final copy, I wanted to make a quick suggestion. You should open up to the autobiography poem. Your numbers are not on your page. Miss Steely went back and numbered her so that when she writes her final copy on this page, she can go back and double check to make sure she's putting the correct information on the correct line. Remember, it gave us line instructions up here, and we talked in a previous video about what a line is. It's not going to be a complete sentence every time. Not in poetry. Poetry follows a whole different set of rules. So, on line one, what did we write on our paper? On our sloppy copy, we wrote our first name. Remember, this is where you're going to use your neatest, nicest handwriting so that when your mom or dad or granny or whoever takes a picture, Miss Steely or Miss Killingsworth can read this very clearly. It certainly helps. So, 
Line one is going to be the title of your poem. Your name is your title. So, if you've got your name on the very first line, and it is the only word on that line, you should give yourself four points. Format. The poem follows the style of poetry having the correct number of lines, rhyme, and rhythm. If you followed the directions for writing your poem, and you copied it just like this, then you're going to give yourself another four points. So you're doing awesome. So I'm going to continue reading so that you can hear what these sentences say, and I might discuss them further. But I'm going to let you go ahead and grade your poem from here on out. Ideas. The poem has creative ideas and word choices that flow together to complete the poem. Did you think creatively? Did you get some good words? If you got some great words that make you smile when you were writing this poem, you go ahead and give yourself a four. If you were thinking, eh, they were okay, but they, I could probably do better, you might give yourself a three. If your lines were blank, you need to give yourself a one. And then my suggestion is, if you've given yourself a one, we need to go back and fix our sloppy copy. Maybe come up with some better words or ask moms and dads for some help for new words. Conventions. The poem is free of, cap of capitalization, punctuation, and grammar errors. Double check to make sure that if you have a proper noun, it has a capital letter. This is where it's going to be important. Also, I want to point out on this one, every time we separated words, there was what? What do we call that type of punctuation? Do you remember? I know it's been a while since we've been in school. Those are commas. Do not forget to copy your commas. It is super important in your autobiography poem. So every place there is a comma, you should copy the comma as well. Double check that. If you have all your capital letters and you have all your commas and you've done the very best you can on spelling, then you would give yourself a four. If you think you still have a few spelling errors or a few punctuation errors, give yourself a three. If you've got quite a few problems, you might give yourself a two. And if you've left the line blank, you'll need to give yourself a one and go back and look at that again. Presentation. The poem is neat and colorful with a matching picture when applicable. We're not asking for a picture today, so you don't even need to worry about that. But did you do your neatest, nicest handwriting? Can Miss Steely or Miss Killingsworth read it easily? If Miss Steely and Miss Killingsworth would tell you to go back, you'd probably need to pick one of these numbers down here. But if you've done your neatest, nicest handwriting, give yourself a four. Now you're going to count all the points and come up with your total. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed writing your autobiography poem. And I'm going to sign off and I'm going to say good night.